The lysimeters that we're going to use for the project are cylinders that are filled with soil. There will be sensors in the side of them uh, and we'll have uh, load cells here uh, on the top of the, uh, the lysimeter to suspend it and, and weigh it. And these lysimeters will be put out and exposed to rainfall. The rain will fall on this uh, exposed surface right here and infiltrate. And what we're interested in knowing is how the water is moving through this lysimeter. So we can monitor the moisture content using these sensors. Uh, we may also be able to measure the soil moisture potential or the matrix potential or the pressure head uh, using other sensors. And um, we also, as shown here, have some electrical resistivity imaging that will be done. So we want to be able to analyze and calculate how we think the moisture is going to move through this lysimeter. And in order to do that, one of the basic things that we need is the soil water retention or the soil moisture characteristic curve. An example of this is shown here. This shows the matrix potential as a function of the volumetric water content for a silt loam. And uh, you can see that as the, the, this is the saturated uh, water content, and then as the make, matrix potential increases, the soil water content decreases as the water drains out of the soil. Uh, now these data here are fit by uh, two curves. This black one is the Van Genuchten equation, which is given here. And so if we want to use this Van Genuchten equation, in order to analyze the flow through the soil, then we need to be able to specify the parameters in this equation. And so th this equation here is written really for this graph, if this graph were inverted, because it shows the water content uh, here as theta, um, this is the dimensionless water content, as a function of the matrix potential uh, right here. And you can see that there are three parameters that we would need to know, alpha, n, and m. And in many cases, m is related to n using this relationship here. So it's really just two parameters, alpha and n. And these two parameters control the shape of this curve. Now, we'll also need to know these two this is the water content uh, at under residual conditions, the residual water content, which would be uh, down here, and the saturated water content, which would be about 0.52 for this soil. Okay, so th that would be four parameters. Uh, and we would probably also want to know the saturated hydraulic conductivity if we were going to simulate the water flow through the soil using the Richards equation. All right, so how are we going to go about determining these parameters? Well, one approach is to measure them in the laboratory on small samples. And we've tried doing this, and we get a variety of different results. And it's not quite clear what we should use. So what I'm suggesting we try is to do a, a test that's basically going to characterize these parameters using the lysimeter itself. And so the approach will be to take the lysimeter, and there's a little bit, a little bit of uh, space here above the, the upper part of the soil, so we're looking down on the lysimeter. And uh, we'll let the soil equilibrate after we pack it. So the, so the so lysimeter will be held upright, and we will um, allow it to uh, drain by gravity and equilibrate out. We want to prevent drying from the upper surface, but just let it uh, equilibrate by gravity. And then we'll um, add a known amount of water uh, shown here to the upper part of the lysimeter. That'll fill up the, uh, the space to some extent uh, above the lysimeter, or above the soil. And then we'll let that water infiltrate and we'll measure the change in the water content, the change in the matrix potential uh, at the sensors that are in the lysimeter. And we'll also measure the change in weight as the water drains out. And so here's the, the procedure. Um, and I've gone through the first couple of steps. We allow the water to equilibrate. That's step one. We add a known volume of water 
to the lysimeter as shown here, that's step two, and then we monitor water content, pressure, or the matrix potential, um, and the total weight. And then step four, what we need to do to analyze this is to have a model that can simulate this test. And that model we use to predict the water content, pressure, and weight uh, if we know the soil moisture retention parameters. And so then in order to analyze this, we'll take this model and this data and we'll invert this model to estimate the parameters. Okay, so that's going to be the general strategy. Now, in order to do this, we have to have a model that can predict these things, and we have to be able to invert that to estimate the parameters. So here's how we're going to do this, or at least this is a suggestion for a first step. So we need a model that can do these three steps that we talked about for conducting the test. Um, the model will be 1D and single porosity. That's kind of the simplest approach that we could take now. And so we'll, we'll start with that. And then we'll set it up in three steps. The first one is to uh, allow the system to come to gravity equilibrium. Uh, we'll start with an initial pressure head uh, that's uniform throughout the soil. The upper boundary will be no flow and the lower one will be specified pressure. And then we add water to the top during uh, step two. Uh, the initial conditions will be from step one. That's how we'll simulate step two. The, we'll start off assuming that we have gravity equilibrium. And then the upper boundary condition will assume that the head ramps up uh, to a specified depth of water at the upper boundary. Uh, and the pressure is equal to zero at the lower boundary. And then in step three, we'll allow the water to redistribute. We'll use initial conditions from step two, and we'll specify that the flux at the top boundary of the model is equal to the rate of head change at the top of the model. Okay, And what's going to happen is that the head at the top of the model, at first, will be determined by the depth of the water. So we'll start out with, say, two centimeters of water depth and then as that water falls, the rate at which it falls is equal to the flux coming into the model or into the lysimeter. And so we'll set up a boundary condition to do that. And then when the water is gone from the top of the model or top of the lysimeter, uh, then the flux will be equal to zero. And we'll be able to tell when to do that because the pressure at the top of the model will go to, will, will drop below zero. Okay, so that's the general setup. The pressure at the lower boundary will be fixed at zero for the whole simulation. All right, so that's the setup. Let me show you how to go about implementing this.